So uh, we've just managed to find the coroner's report, the inquest um, for William Jackson Crawford's death. I didn't think we'd actually des necessarily find it. But we're just about to go and read it now, find out some more details, hopefully, on exactly what happened to him and where he was found. So this is uh, AJ speaking after leaving the Public Records Office, Northern Ireland, and I've got the coroner's court documents in front of me here, and it reads, an inquisition indented taken for our Sovereign Lord the King at the Commercial Hotel in Bangor. So that's where uh, the inquest was held. It was held on Saturday the 31st of July uh, in the year of our Lord, 1920, and in the 10th year of the reign of our Sovereign Lord, George V. So it was actually held directly the day after William's body was found. Um, and let's just go through what it says. The coroner's name was uh, Samuel Wallace. Uh, he was of the Northern Division of the County of Down. On the view of the body of William Jackson Crawford, then and there lying dead upon the oaths of... And then we've got a long list of names, which you'll find in the document in the William Jackson Crawford section on my website. If we then go to the second page, uh, we have here the deposition of witnesses. Um, and this, I have to say at the time, I found uh, quite difficult to read, actually. Um, but it says here, deposition of witnesses severally taken and acknowledged on behalf of our Sovereign Lord, the King, touching the death of William Jackson Crawford at Bangor, Parish of Bangor. And so we go now to the deposition of William's wife, uh, Elizabeth Crawford. I'd love to think this is her writing. But I don't know. Anyway, we'll listen now to what Elizabeth Crawford had to say. I live at Brookfield Terrace, Park Avenue, Sydenham. The body the jury has viewed is that of my husband, William Jackson Crawford. He was 40 years of age. He was a teacher. I last saw him alive yesterday at 10.30am. He was then in his usual health, but has been sleepless for four weeks past. I had a wire sent by him from Clandyboy about 2pm yesterday saying he was going for a motor drive. Elizabeth Crawford. So that was Elizabeth Crawford. She didn't have a lot to say. Interesting what she has to say, though, I think, about William's state of health. Some really important detail there about timings as well. The fact that a cable or a wire was sent to her uh, after he left from Clanderboy. The fact that she says that he had been sleepless for four weeks past. And when you say sleepless for four weeks past, that slightly implies to me not struggled to sleep or hadn't slept very well. And in his last known letter, of course, to Mr. Gow, the editor of Light magazine, um, he says, I've been struck down mentally and his contemporaries reported as much that he was feeling under great pressure perhaps because of the expectations around his books and public speaking engagements. So that was Elizabeth Crawford Williams' wife. We turn now to Sergeant Matthew McKeefrey who is taking the stand. Uh, this is the policeman who found Williams' body so let's see what he had to say. I am stationed in Bangor. At 8.30am today, I received a phone message that there was a dead body of a man lying on the rocks at the girls' home banger. Deceased was lying dead on the rocks, dressed except for that his overcoat was off lying a few yards from him. I searched him and found the following property. A sealed packet addressed to his wife. A letter also addressed to his wife. A silver watch stopped at 7.50. Also a gold chain. Two bunches of keys and a purse with 15 shillings. Six pence silver, plus an amount in coppers. A cheque book, a nagging bottle three quarter full of whiskey, a pipe and tobacco pouch. Two packets labelled Carmen, also 
two matchboxes, a pen knife and a small address book. Matthew McKeefrey. Well, thank you, Sergeant McKeefrey there, who made the somewhat grisly sounding discovery of William Jackson Crawford's body foaming at the mouth on Picky Rocks in Bangor the day before he gave this testimony. A nagging bottle, by the way, N-A-G-G-I-N, is an Irish term for a, a bottle of a certain amount of spirits. What I wouldn't give to know what was in that package and in that letter actually moreover to Elizabeth Crawford his wife did he confess something did he express knowledge that he hadn't expressed before did he admit that he'd found something out that caused him to want to end his life or did he express that he still absolutely believed in Kathleen Golliher her family and spirits and the afterlife. Perhaps he believed that's where he was going. In truth, we'll probably never know. Elizabeth makes no comment of the letter or the package in her testimony. The coroner doesn't seem to ask about it. So as Sergeant McKeefree steps down from giving his evidence, we turn now to Dr Mitchell and hear what he has to say. I am Medical Officer Bangor Dispensary District. I've made an external examination of the body of deceased. There are not any marks of violence. There was some froth coming from his mouth. His face is very flushed. In my opinion, the cause of his death was poisoning probably by cyanide of potassium. Attention please. No documents will be issued after 4.15pm. It would be appreciated if this document is no longer required. So there we have it. That's the full... Uh, inquest report or coroner's report um, with evidence given by Sergeant McKeefrey, Dr Mitchell and Elizabeth Jackson Crawford. I think it's fair to say that it fills in some important detail but as with pretty much everything frankly in, in this story it poses as many questions as it answers. <laughs> 